we go. I think I hit a button, weird button. Anyway, so I, I just wanted to share what flies. We're, we're using a five weight fly rod here. Five weight, nine foot, uh, TFO, uh, Temple Fork Outfitters. Thanks buddies. And uh, look at that there. We have a salmon fly. And then we also have this nice little green, oops, nymph right there. You can see that. So we've got a salmon fly with a nymph dropper. And we've had a few fish come up here. I don't know what they're feeding on. I'm not seeing any bugs in the air, but I imagine it's maybe caddis or maybe just something floating down that they're seeing. But there's something going on. And so hopefully it'll get more prolific as the day goes, which means more bugs in the air. Uh, but we're going to get fishing and see what happens. All right, we'll uh, turn it back on if we catch fish. Fish on, caddis fly. There we go. He's a tugger. Well, he got off. Hey, good morning. We're heading off to go fishing. Uh, we've been on a four wheel drive trail and I used the map, but the map just, I don't know if it's wrong or if there was a road on there that they didn't have marked, uh, but this should have been the road, but hell, <laughs> look, I mean, it's just a crazy four wheel drive road into the middle of the woods. And we basically went all the way back to where it kind of dead ends out. And I think it's just an old hunting camp road is what it is. It's supposed to go down by the river. I could fly the drone, but the trees are pretty thick and I'm just like, whatever, dude. We're just gonna go back out. I'm pretty sure we're on a hunt and hunt somebody's hunting camp back in here. Uh, there's another road right there, but look at it. It pretty much is just mud bog and then it kind of disperses into a two track. Uh, this is a little more worn here, uh, but there's been very little traffic coming back through here. Somebody was driving back in here, probably someone like me going, well, it's supposed to be able to access fishing, but they came all the way in here and had to turn around just like we are. Anyways, uh, we're headed back out. Uh, this morning we had a problem. Uh, we just had that alternator replaced in this vehicle because it was going bad. It was, uh, we ended up buying a battery first because uh, that's what I thought it would be. And it wasn't the battery. So it was $200 later on a battery that I didn't need. But I'll put that battery, the older battery, which is still good and a great battery. I'll put that, replace the camper battery with that one because it's a much better, stouter battery. Uh, and then, uh, the alternator though today was squealing. Uh, the bearings were bad uh, in it. Uh, it's kind of come and go uh, on it. Uh, when you go faster and then you stop, you can definitely hear it uh, squealing. So something's not right with it. So we'll have to get that replaced. Uh, but we're only about an hour away from where we had the work done. So we can drive down there for the day, get it replaced. They're trying to locate a new alternator. Uh, so they can just replace it. And uh, when they figure that out, then we'll go down and maybe get it replaced and come back up. In the middle of the road coming up right there, I could go charging through that, but you know what? I did that once in Minnesota and it was over the roof of my, my hood of my truck is that's how deep it was. You just never know how deep those things are. So we're not going in there. Did that once in a lifetime and not doing it again. Yeah, full of lakes. How deep is it gonna be? Oh, it's pretty deep there. <laughs> it was pretty deep back in there. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I mean, it's been just one after another of those. And uh, most of them are only, you know, up to the tires somewhere thereabout. So, but I definitely in Minnesota, man, I went through one and it literally was probably six feet deep. 
and my truck got buried and sank and died and I had to get it towed out. It was a nightmare. So I'm kind of cautious about that stuff now. <laughs> I guess in my old age, I'm getting wiser. Digs down. So we'll stay off to one side. Hopefully it's not too muddy. Oh yeah, it's not so bad. Whew. Sorry about the quick camera movements. And then there's a ton of these little ones. So it's just a slow progression to get to the river. Look at this. We're up above the river going down. Oh yeah, look at that. All those rocks and stones and it's totally wadeable across there. It looks pretty shallow. Uh, this road, I'm gonna put it in four wheel drive. But, uh, but yeah, this should be great fishing down here. Uh, we just got to get down the steep incline and then park somewhere down there and fish. This is going to be beautiful. Thank God we got a four wheel drive, but look at this. It's just beautiful here. Wow. This is what we imagined fishing. Look, we got this all to ourselves. Should be a ton of rainbows in here. Maybe some browns. Wow. And look at that wall over there. Pretty exceptional. Look at this. We got a lake here. We got to go to. There might be an easier way to that first road we were on where all those uh, telephone poles were and stuff. Uh, it was a rough road, but it wasn't as bad as the one we came in and we crossed it just up there. So I think we might be able to actually come down here and it'd be able to come right here and camp it would be awesome. We could do that with our truck and maybe our buddy John might want to come up here. I don't know. We'll see. Fish this whole stretch here. Uh, we did some dries along the shore. You can see there's little mayflies coming off. Uh, they're kind of a maybe a PMD actually coming off a of pink Albert uh, But there's no real fish rising once in a while a little dink sardine sized fish will rise out here And then we actually just tried nymphing with an indicator and a nymph a stonefly nymph Because uh, that's kind of the next bunch of bugs stoneflies and uh, Green drakes will be coming off and then in some areas brown drakes too here uh, more silty bottoms, but these are definitely PMDs popping off. But what's happening is there's the dam has increased flow uh, by 100 CFS. They did it yesterday and they did it again today. And when that happens, it changes the whole river as far as fishing goes, as far as the trout go. It just throws them off. It, it changes the temperature of the water. Uh, it's good. It flushes. It's supposed to be done, whatever. But uh, it's just how it is. Sometimes when they increase the flows out of the dams, because this water all comes from under a dam, and it just kind of puts the fishing off for a day or two. So, look, here's a grouse right in front of the truck. See him in the middle of the road? Right there. There's a grouse. Pretty cool. That was a grouse, a forest grouse, pretty cool. When I was living up in Elk City and fighting fire, after work, we would go hunt those all the time and I'd eat them for dinner. They were awesome, like a forest chicken. <laughs> pretty cool.